two four-time world champions, Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. But who would be celebrating with a high five come season's end? Guys, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. Ah, thank you, boys. Unbelievable. Thank you, I love you. Thank you so much, every single one. World champion, pal. It's the greatest moment of my life. You're the triple world champion, Sebastian Vettel. You are the man. Get in there, Lewis. Uh, champion of the world. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone. Just so grateful for all your hard work this year. God bless you. Fantastic, you're a four-time world champion. Unbelievable, guys. We did it! Yes! Yes! I love you guys. I love you. Melbourne kicked off the 21 race campaign and while Ferrari had proved quickest during pre-season testing, there were still many questions when the cars rolled out of the Albert Park pit lane for the first time. And the cars weren't the only new things in town there was a major development in the world of driver safety as well. The halo is a mandate inherently a dangerous sport where drivers risk their lives every lap. The halo is the latest step in the relentless development of driver safety. Who would come out on top in the first qualifying session of the year? Well, not Valtteri Bottas, who overstepped the mark at the start of Q3. He got his left wheels on the grass at the exit of Turn 1, and he was a passenger thereafter. Lewis Hamilton delivered a stunning lap to take the 73rd pole position of his career and his 7th in Melbourne. Alongside him, Kimi Räikkönen. Vettel was back on row two, the German just one-tenth of a second ahead of Max Verstappen. Magnussen and Grosjean made row three an all-Hass affair, followed by Hülkenberg in seventh and local hero Daniel Ricciardo eighth after receiving a three-place grid penalty. Next up were Spaniards Carlos Sainz and Fernando Alonso, both powered by Renault following McLaren's switch from Honda. Van Dorn was 11th, just ahead of Sergio Perez. Williams were delighted to have Stroll in 13th, Alongside him, Esteban Ocon. Valtteri Bottas lined up 15th following his crash and a five-place grid penalty for a gearbox change. Hartley was 16th and the Salvers filled row 9, Ericsson just ahead of his highly rated rookie teammate Charles Leclerc. And completing the grid was Sergei Sorokin and Pierre Gasly. And we are all set now for the 2018 Formula One season. It's lights out and away we go. It's a good start from Hamilton. Raikkonen comes across, cuts off Sebastian Vettel. Verstappen's in the hunt as well. Hamilton will lead them into turn one. And there goes Kimi Raikkonen ahead of Sebastian Vettel. Great start from Kevin Magnussen. He's got ahead there of Max Verstappen. Congratulations, they all appear to have got through turn one and two. Look at, look at Raikkonen fancying down the outside into turn three. Good speed he had in the Ferrari there. Meanwhile, back to Magnussen and Verstappen. Well, with Verstappen tucked up behind Magnussen. Oh, he's round. He's oh. lost it. And Grosjean's got past and Ricardo's got past. And here comes the Renault as well of Nico Hülkenberg. And he's lost places there. And there goes Daniel Ricardo on Roman Grosjean. He's trying to go the long way round and he can't quite make that move stick. Lewis Hamilton, race leader, comes into the pits. Ted Kravitz, you're right near the Mercedes garage. He's right in front of me, and it's the soft tyres as well. So they're covering off the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen. As we said earlier, it's the track position which is king round here. And Hamilton's away. He's just got to make sure he'll be rejoined ahead of Kimi Raikkonen for his sake. And Kevin Magnussen looks like he's done it. Yeah. Is that going very, very slowly? That's Kevin Magnussen. After pitting in the Haas and after performing superbly well in the opening 22 laps of this race, one of the crew there just walking off and out of the garage. And by the looks of it, Martin, would you think one of those wheels isn't attached yeah. properly? Hang on, we've got oh, another oh, not problem. Another one, surely not. Roman Grosjean's pulled over to the side of the track. What is happening down at Haas this afternoon? What could have been one of their best weekends on a racetrack 
has turned into absolute disaster. So this is what happened to Roman Grosjean. This is why we've got the virtual safety car. And once again, it looks like a wheel gun problem. Sebastian Vettel is going to come out ahead of Lewis Hamilton here. Hamilton has to adhere to the virtual safety car time. Vettel didn't have to adhere to that because he's under the pit lane rules and regulations. Point, and he is ahead now of Lewis Hamilton. What just happened, guys? Why didn't you tell me Vettel was in the pits? What happened, guys? Uh, we're just reviewing Lewis. And those two four-time world champions are going to finish one and two this afternoon. And like it was 12 months ago, it is Sebastian Vettel who comes home to win the Australian Grand Prix. Ferrari take the opening salvo in 2018. After 58 laps of hard racing and good tactics by Ferrari, it was first blood to Vettel ahead of Hamilton and Raikkonen. Obviously, we were a little bit lucky today. You know, Lewis was uh, had a great lap yesterday. Uh, he deserved pole position, and he, you know, drove a very good race. Obviously, controlled it in the beginning. Then, as I said, we got a bit lucky, but we take it. Uh, we put a flag up in Maranello for every win. So uh, I asked them to do that this morning uh, back in Europe, and uh, yeah. But I think uh, it gives us a good, you know, good start and a good wind and fresh motivation for the next coming weeks. The teams headed into the desert for round two, and as has been the case every year since 2014, the Bahrain race would take place after dark, the track lit up by a vast array of stadium lights. And there was drama aplenty. Qualifying had only just got underway when Max Verstappen lost control of his Red Bull and hit the barrier at turn two. And with so much damage to the front of his car, he was unable to take any further part in the session and he would line up 15th on the grid. But the top 10 looked like this. It was an all Ferrari front row, Vettel taking the 51st pole position of his career. Bottas was the lead Mercedes driver in third, ahead of Ricardo's Red Bull. Next up was Pierre Gasly, a stunning fifth for Toro Rosso. Nico Hülkenberg was seventh ahead of Ocon in eighth. And Hamilton, the pole sitter in Melbourne last time out, started only ninth after a five-place grid penalty for a gearbox chain. Sebastian Vettel starting on pole for a 51st time in Formula One. Vettel gets away very well. Hamilton tries to get past Nico Hülkenberg straight away. And it's Sebastian Vettel from Valtteri Bottas. Kimi Raikkonen on the inside. Ricardo covering off. Kevin Magnussen, Sergio Perez trying to find room around the outside. And it's Vettel into turn two he goes from Valtteri Bottas. The Mercedes ahead of the Ferrari. And there's Kevin Magnussen making contact and having to run wide and almost chopping off the front wing of Esteban Ocon. Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton dueling, going into turn one. Verstappen on the inside, they're going wheel to wheel. Fernando Alonso's going to watch out, and they make contact. Verstappen gets past and almost runs over the front wing of Lewis Hamilton as he moves himself up into 10th place. Who's got a puncture? Looks like Hamilton slowing a little bit. Verstappen's, no, Verstappen's got, a got a puncture with that contact. So we're on board with Verstappen now. Hamilton ahead of him, and he knows that there is a gap coming at the end of the main straight. Alonso rather squeezed them up a bit. That's where they clashed. That's where Verstappen ran over the front wing of Hamilton's Mercedes. That's where he got the puncture. And it is absolute double disaster for Red Bull as Verstappen gets a puncture and limps past the stricken teammate Daniel Ricciardo pulling over onto the left-hand side of the track. Oh, steering wheel's gone dead. Everything's gone dead, look. No power, no signal like somebody switched the master switch off. Now Ocon is wheel to wheel and we'll see Mercedes power in the Force India against Renault power as well. And we'll see Renault power and Alonso against Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. Magnussen ahead of Harley. Hamilton down the inside on Nico Hülkenberg. Ocon might lose out to Fernando Alonso. Hamilton makes up places ahead of Hülkenberg, ahead of Alonso. Now, look at this for a triple overtake. <laughs> this is fantastic. The, the McLaren behind Hamilton. He could just about see the track through the sparks. And down the inside he goes. Kimi Raikkonen in, and uh, he will definitely. Oh no! Oh no! They Kimi Raikkonen out and has hit one of the mechanics. And left and rear wheel's not on properly. Stop! 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 Stop!
He's got DRS as Bottas, and you can see that he's gaining. He's got the power turned up to 11. Into turn one they go. Bottas has a little look, but he's just a bit too far behind. Sebastian Vettel survives that one. Lap 18, he put those tyres on. He is nursing them home towards the end of 57 laps to emulate Michael Schumacher, Nico Rosberg, Jensen Button and Lewis Hamilton, who all won their 200th Grand Prix start. And in his 200th Grand Prix start, Sebastian Vettel wins the Bahrain Grand Prix for a second win in 2018. Tires were done for the last 10 laps. Grazie ragazzi, mamma mia, Ma mamma mia. The second race of the season and a second win of the season for Sebastian Vettel after Ferrari showed yet more tactical nous on the pit wall. Bottas pressured him in the closing stages, but he had to settle for second place with Hamilton completing the podium. It was out to the Far East for round three, the Chinese Grand Prix in Shanghai. The build-up to the race didn't go well for Daniel Ricciardo when the turbo on his Renault engine let go during final practice. His mechanics were still frantically rebuilding the rear of his car as qualifying got underway two hours later. And there were huge sighs of relief and some celebratory oversteer when he eventually made it out on track in the dying moments of Q1. It was Ferrari who once again dominated qualifying. The team took its second consecutive front row lockout, Vettel ahead of Raikkonen. It was an all Mercedes second row, Bottas marginally ahead of Hamilton. And the teams continued to line up in formation with the Red Bulls fifth and sixth. Nico Hülkenberg was seventh again and Sergio Perez eighth. With Carlos Sainz and Romain Grosjean completing the top 10 for Renault and Haas respectively, the stage was set for a thrilling contest. It's lights out and away we go. Good start from Vettel, good start from Raikkonen. Vettel does cut across to block out his teammate. Bottas ahead of Hamilton. Ricardo on the inside is cut out by Verstappen and Hülkenberg is trying to get past Ricardo round the outside at turn one. They've all avoided the usual chaos through the first couple of corners. Sebastian Vettel out in front ahead of Valtteri Bottas and Kimi Raikkonen. Force India running a little bit wide then, kicking up a little bit of dirt, but they're all through and onto the hairpin. And there's a yellow flag because the two Toro Rossos have got very close together. Down at the hairpin. What the are you close the door? And the safety car is exactly what they have got, which I wonder if means people are going to dive into the pits. And one of the Red Bulls has dived into the pits. It's Max Verstappen. And this is a gift for anybody who is worried about getting to the end on those white strike medium tyres. And it's tires. a double stack for Red Bull because in comes Ricardo as well. Why did Mercedes not pull Hamilton in and equally Raikkonen and be that far behind? Why not stick him in the softer tyre? We are racing again and we end lap 35 with Valtteri Bottas in the lead. Verstappen has a look at Lewis Hamilton. Well, oh. they're very nearly, they touch again. Verstappen, in his eagerness to get past Lewis Hamilton, has lost out to his teammate Daniel Ricciardo. He runs off the road. Should Verstappen just have bided his time a little bit there? Gaining down that back straight. Ricciardo goes for it from a long way back. This would be sensational if he makes it. And you know what? He has made it. Daniel Ricciardo at one stage looked well out of this race. He's close, he's but much closer than he was to Hamilton. Well, he's got the slipstream, he's going, he's going, he's going, and Sebastian Vettel is gone. Daniel Ricciardo is up into second place. And that one was the easier move. Red Bull against Ferrari, and the Ferrari did not have the pace to defend against Ricciardo. You said he could win this race, Martin. Give it a couple more laps, he could be in the lead. Seven. Oh, he's so locked Bottas up. Locks Bottas, up. big lockup. Where does that leave him on the way out? And oh, oh no, Verstappen no, on the inside of Vettel. They no, have touched. Max. That was inevitable from the moment Verstappen decided to go for it. Kimi Raikkonen has managed to scoot past Lewis Hamilton by the looks of it. But Sebastian Vettel hit by Max Verstappen. Are yeah, you locked up and then just turned it very sharp? I don't think I need to say anything here. 
Bottas covers Go. it off, but he can't cover it off totally. Ricardo somehow finds a gap there, and Valtteri Bottas gave him enough respect and enough room, and he squeezed through Daniel Ricardo to take the lead of the Chinese Grand Prix. Come on. Get it, Kill. Get it. Woo! Daniel Ricciardo retired from four of the last six races. He had a turbo failure in practice. He very nearly missed out on qualifying. He has made every single opportunity that's come his way today. Ricciardo wins the Chinese Grand Prix. <laughs> yes, boys. That is job, mate. Amazing job, mate. That was absolutely clinical, clinical moves. Clinical moves indeed from Daniel Ricciardo, whose roller coaster of a weekend ended on the highest of highs. Bottas was second and Raikkonen third. I don't seem to win boring races. Um, they're all pretty fun, so uh, that was unexpected. You know, uh, putting ourselves 24 hours ago, I, I, I thought we might be starting at the back of the grid, so. A lot of the time you get one chance to try, so uh, I, I made the most of every opportunity. Sometimes you just got to lick the stamp and send it, so uh, <laughs> there we go. I, I enjoyed it very much. The last of the early season long haul races was in Baku, Azerbaijan, located 28 metres below sea level on the banks of the Caspian Sea. Vettel was flying in qualifying and took pole position for the third consecutive race, with title rival Hamilton alongside. Bottas was third ahead of last year's winner Daniel Ricciardo. Verstappen and Raikkonen shared row three, although Raikkonen wasn't happy with his Ferrari and was half a second slower than the Dutchman. It was an all-force India fourth row, Ocon ahead of Perez. And Sainz was ninth ahead of Stroll, who took a podium at this race last year. Hamilton facing towards the Ferrari. Vettel and Hamilton both get away well, and Kimi Raikkonen too, pressurising Daniel Ricciardo in a turn one as Vettel leads Hamilton, leads Bottas, Ricciardo, Verstappen running wide, Raikkonen then just behind him and he might have a look in the turn two. So far, all getting away cleanly, and there's Ricciardo just getting ahead of Verstappen and there's damage. There could have been a front wing one of the Force Indias, there's contact down in the turn two, Paul. Yeah, it looks like somebody's lost a front wing, you can see, and it looks like there's a lot of there's debris. There's a lot of debris uh, flying around, Paul, there's also a lot of sparks as well, sorry just to cut in there as Raikkonen and Ocon in their collision. Ocon is out of the race. Kimi Raikkonen into Esteban Ocon, down at turn three. Kimi Raikkonen, Ocon squeezed in. There was no room. Did Ocon know he was there? He certainly felt it when the Ferrari ran into him. Okay, I need to fox. What a stupid guy. He closed me the door. You know, we were side by side. I don't understand. And this is what happened then to Fernando Alonso, Paul, going to turn two. There's the two Williams, Sorokin and Stroll. There you see the debris coming off. And Alonso now on the inside. And this is where, oh. Oh, they just didn't leave him any space at all, didn't they? That Renault was lucky to get away without getting a puncture as well. And Sebastian Vettel is going to have to defend from an absolute army behind him. And what a very well-controlled good move that was from Vettel. He has got the advantage out in front and he's got a bit of distance between himself and Lewis Hamilton. Bottas stays there, the two Rebels going for it. Diving down the inside, Ricardo fends off Max Verstappen. And behind those two comes the Renault of Carlos Sainz ahead of Pierre Gasly. Verstappen's looking down the inside. Ricardo has to back off and let him through. Otherwise, those two were coming together. That's a brilliant move from Verstappen. Great respect for Ricardo, but now Carlos Sainz is on Verstappen's tail, and Sainz has managed to get ahead of Verstappen, who's got the inside line going through into turn three. Brilliant racing from all three drivers as the Williams of Lance Stroll and Nico Hulkenberg are fighting it out as well. Max Verstappen struggling, Ricardo's passing him, Sergei Sorokin's passing Lance Stroll as well into turn one and the two oh. Rebels might have touched there as well, Verstappen aggressively defending against his teammate, there's no team orders down at Red Bull today, Verstappen stays ahead. And out will come Sebastian Vettel into this race behind Valtteri Bottas who takes over in the lead and ahead of Lewis Hamilton, so Bottas leads from Vettel and from Hamilton, then comes the two Rebels, still Verstappen ahead of Ricciardo, uh, this is Max I would imagine not wanting Daniel Ricciardo to get anywhere near a slipstream or a He needs toe. to keep him over the left, 
but he's going to oh. try and dive down. Andy and Sunday have crashed. They've gone into each other. Daniel Ricciardo late breaking, couldn't stop in time. Max Verstappen was right in front of him. And the two Red Bulls who have been touching and barging and banging all afternoon have had one bang too many. Oh, someone's crashed under the safety car. Uh, it's That's the Haas. He's weaving around, trying to get temperature into the tyres. And what's happened here, Paul? Oh, he's just dropped it himself. Trying to get temperature. I mean, we've seen drivers do this behind the safety car before, but... What happened? I think Ericsson hit us. A bit wrong to say that Ericsson hit him. Vettel goes to block and now tries to gain on Valtteri Bottas. Hamilton's going to dive down the inside. Raikkonen as well. Sebastian oh, Vettel goes down the inside and he locks up. And that's going to cost him one and two and maybe three places. Valtteri Bottas leads from Hamilton. Raikkonen on the inside on Sebastian Vettel. And he picks up a place on his teammate as well. Oh, and there's a puncture for Valtteri he just ran, Bottas. He ran across some debris. He ran across debris that Hamil was on the track. Hamilton takes the lead. Oh, my God. It just blew up on his own. 12. Lewis Hamilton is going to take the championship lead here in Azerbaijan on this Sunday evening. He takes the checker flag now to win in Baku. It is Hamilton ahead of Raikkonen, ahead of Sergio Perez, who picks up what at one stage was a very unlikely podium. Get in there, Lewis. Well done, mate. I think Lady Luck was on our side today. She was indeed. After Bottas's late race misfortune, Hamilton took his first win of 2018, with Raikkonen second and Perez third. Victory for Hamilton with Vettel only fourth gave him the championship lead for the first time this year, albeit just four points ahead of his arch rival, and Lewis knew it was one of his luckier victories. You ha I have to take it. You know, days like this don't come too often. I've definitely been really unlucky in times in my career where I've been leading the race and lost it, and so I have to take this. The city of Barcelona kicked off the European season at the start of May. The Circuit de Catalunya was a favourite of Mercedes, who'd won there in three of the last four years. But all eyes were on Robert Kubica when practice kicked off on Friday. It was his first on-track action at a Grand Prix since Abu Dhabi 2010, he completed 24 laps before handing the Williams back to Sergei Sorokin. Mercedes were fastest in all three practice sessions and they continued to show that form in qualifying. The Ferraris of Vettel and Raikkonen lined up third and fourth, with the Red Bulls fifth and sixth, Verstappen and Ricciardo separated by just two thousandths of a second. Magnussen was an impressive seventh, with local hero Alonso in eighth. And rounding out the top 10 were Carlos Sainz and Roman Grosjean. And it's lights out, and away we go. And it's the dash down to turn one then. Who's going to come out on top? Lewis Hamilton ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Sebastian Vettel trying to find a way past Kimi Räikkönen, and then Verstappen and Ricciardo. And now the inside goes Fernando Alonso. Hamilton into the lead. Sebastian Vettel goes second ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Running wide is Stoffel van Dorn and also Charles Leclerc. Someone's gone off, quite a few have gone off there. You can see Sergei Sorokin threading his way through and that looks like Roman Grosjean very much out of this race. What has happened to the Haas driver? He's collided with Nico Hülkenberg, I think, who's out of this race as well. Safety car right at the start. Let's have a look. Alonso getting a bit out of shape, signs down the inside and then Grosjean loses it, spins. 360 degrees and Hülkenberg could do nothing to avoid him and goes off the track losing his left rear wheel. Oh mate, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yep. Are you okay, man? Yeah, I'm okay. I was, uh, I tried the outside, yeah, we lost it a bit and then I got the dirt here, yeah, that's it. Down the main straight, we can get racing once again. Hamilton leads this race from Sebastian Vettel, Valtteri Bottas, Kimi Räikkönen, Verstappen and Ricciardo as well. And he's under pressure, Kimi Räikkönen from the Red Bull and Sainz is pressurising Magnussen and Alonso is having a go at Austin, Esteban Ocon as well. But Ocon just stays ahead. I have some issues, nothing happened. I have no problem. And stop the car, Kimi, stop the car. 
And we're on board now with Max Verstappen. Uh, the Williams in front of him. And there you go, Martin. Front wing end plates on the left-hand side. Look. Make a picture on this straight. Yeah, we've got it already. We've seen it. You've got end plate damage. Structurally, the wing is fine. So as long as you're happy with the balance, all good. OK, he's going to get away with it. Fortunately for him, the piece has obviously come off. There it goes. And onto the racing line as well. That's a very critical place for that to be. Lewis Hamilton on his way for a 30th consecutive points finish. He's going to break Michael Schumacher's record as well and notch up his 41st win from pole position as Hamilton takes the win at the Spanish Grand Prix. And it was a win that never looked in doubt. Hamilton won again with teammate Bottas in second and Verstappen battled on with his damaged car to claim third, his first podium finish of the campaign. With Vettel finishing only fourth in Spain, Hamilton extended his lead in the driver's standings to 17 points. Behind them, only 11 points covered Bottas in third to Ricardo in fifth. The Monaco Grand Prix, the oldest street race in Formula One, and one of the most iconic sporting events in the world. The glamorous principality goes through an incredible transformation for Formula One. Weeks of hard work and preparation culminate in one of the toughest races of the year. To win in Monaco is special. The barriers are close and even the smallest of mistakes can result in an accident. As Max Verstappen found out during final practice on Saturday, he hit the barrier at turn 16 and such was the damage to his Red Bull that he was unable to take part in qualifying. He'd start the race from 20th and last. Daniel Ricciardo, meanwhile, proved the ultimate pace of Red Bull by setting a lap record en route to his second pole position in Monaco. Last year's winner Sebastian Vettel was alongside him in second. World Championship leader Hamilton was next up with Raikkonen in fourth. Esteban Ocon put in a terrific lap to line up sixth, his best grid position of the year. It was an all-Spanish fourth row, Alonso ahead of Sainz. And rounding out the top ten were Perez and Pierre Gasly. Ricardo on pole, Vettel alongside him, Hamilton and Raikkonen just behind. 227 metres, down to turn one, Ricardo and Vettel getting very close together. Ricardo leads from Vettel, from Hamilton, from Raikkonen, Bottas, and Ocon just staying ahead of Fernando Alonso. Through Beau Rivage we go and rising up towards Casino Square. Kimi Raikkonen right behind Lewis Hamilton, Ricardo pulling away from Sebastian Vettel. We're on board with Max Verstappen, who's already got past Grosjean and Magnussen right at the start. Now this is contact between uh, Lance, that's where Lance Stroll had his problem. Where he got his left front puncher then, isn't it? Losing power. Losing power was what oh, no. Daniel Ricciardo just said. Just keep it focused, mate. Keep it focused. Yeah, I got no power though. Will it get better? Negative, Daniel. Negative.
he's going to go for it, of course he is, he's Max Verstappen, down towards the chicane he goes, this time he's cut the chicane but comes back over the curve and still stays ahead of Carlos Sainz, Sainz tries to fight back, through to back, Verstappen gets ahead and moves up into ninth place. Leclerc behind has a problem, Leclerc behind has got the problem, we need to open the gap as much as you can, we are doing a good job. So what is Leclerc's problem and is Leclerc actually going to go for it here and oh he can't stop and he has gone straight on into Brendan Harley and you could see that that was coming. Charles Leclerc's first ever home Grand Prix in Monaco has ended with retirement and big damage as well to the Toro Rosso of Brendan Hartley. You did see his uh, left front brake fail as soon as he hit the brakes. Puff of black uh, carbon dust and brake failure then. It won't slow down. He did actually rub the barrier, but the problem came before that. Today in Monte Carlo, it's redemption day for Daniel Ricciardo. He wins the Monaco Grand Prix and he will celebrate that for a long, long time to come. Sebastian Vettel comes home to take second place and close Lewis Hamilton's championship lead. Hamilton in third place completes the podium lineup. Amazing. I don't know how you did that, Daniel. Incredible. Holy. Holy tomorrow. Cheers, boys. Redemption. Despite those technical concerns, Ricardo held on to win his first Monaco Grand Prix. Vettel was second, and Hamilton completed the podium. With Vettel finishing ahead of Hamilton, the gap at the top of the points table closed to just 14, and Ricardo jumped up to third. Two years in the making this, so I, I finally feel like the redemption is, has arrived. Um, we had problems, I don't know how much the radio broadcasts, but we had, uh, we had a lot to deal with during the race. Um, I think it was before halfway, I, I, I felt a loss of power and I thought the race was done. And uh, we got home just using six gears, so there was a few doubts that came in mid-race, but uh, yeah, just... We won Monaco, so <laughs> feels good. Feels good. You've got to do a good jump where you land flat. You know, you make that slap. Belly flop. Yeah, belly flop. <laughs> Can you do a belly flop? I mean, it'll hurt. The belly I don't flop. Know much. The belly flop challenge. <laughs> Everyone's done the backflip and the normal jump. You got to do a belly flop. All right. Round seven saw the teams make their first transatlantic trip of the season to Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. There were plenty of celebrations leading into the weekend, not least for Fernando Alonso, who was celebrating his 300th Grand Prix. And there was the annual inter-team raft race staged on the Olympic rowing basin behind the F1 paddock. A bit of fun for everyone before the serious on-track business began. The event was won by Williams, a nice shot in the arm for the team during what was proving to be a difficult season. Ferrari held the advantage on the circuit named after their legendary driver Gilles Villeneuve. Sebastian Vettel took his fourth pole of the year. Verstappen was third with championship leader Hamilton just behind. Raikkonen and Ricardo shared row three just two hundredths of a second separating them. Then came Hulkenberg and Ocon in seventh and eighth. Their Renault and Force India teammates Sainz and Perez completed the top ten. It's lights out, and away we go. Verstappen does start very well. Sebastian Vettel covers it across. Bottas has got a fight on his hands against Verstappen, and he loses out by going into turn two. Tries to fight back again. It's wheel to wheel as Vettel goes away. Bottas gets ahead of Max Verstappen. Then comes Lewis Hamilton, Daniel Ricciardo ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. Oh, and it's a massive crash. It's Brendan Hartley, and he's got tangled up with Lance Stroll. And coming out of that chicane, Hartley got squeezed up against the fence. The Williams, an innocent. Bystander in that. 
crossed. Yeah, go for you, okay? I got a punch there. I think I got a punch there. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. He just run me out of the road. We're going to get this race going once again. Sebastian Vettel will get the jump. Watch Verstappen behind Bottas. Watch Bottas go as well. We are racing here in Montreal. Vettel leads Bottas. Verstappen, Hamilton, Ricardo Raikkonen, Ocon ahead now of Nico Hülkenberg as well. As soon as turn one they go. And Sebastian Vettel got a great restart. And, and going wide, Sergio Perez in the Force India. Getting it all wrong down at turn one. Cold tyres, cold brakes. It's caught him out. But it hit me very hard. Man, what did Sainz did? He just took me off. Verstappen goes through the final chicane. Hamilton goes through the final chicane. They're hurtling down the main straight at nearly 200 miles an hour. And coming out now, Daniel Ricciardo into the racetrack proper. Daniel Ricciardo has got ahead of Lewis Hamilton. Oh, boys. Watch good stuff. Need to retire, but we'll return to the garage. We will return to the garage. 300th Grand Prix weekend for Fernando Alonso and that sinking feeling that he experienced way too often. And he will retake the championship lead. Sebastian Vettel wins the Canadian Grand Prix and has led this race from start to finish. It was a dominant victory for Vettel, whose only previous success in Canada had come in 2013. Bottas was second for the fourth time this year, and Max Verstappen completed the podium. With Hamilton finishing only fifth, Vettel's victory saw him retake the lead of the World Championship by one point. Verstappen's podium saw him close the gap to Raikkonen in fifth place. I think after a long time, a long stretch that Ferrari didn't win here, I think uh, I saw the people around and they were super happy. So, yeah, I'm sure they will have a they had a blast and uh, they will have a blast tonight. So, just happy and grazie. The French Grand Prix was back on the calendar for the first time since 2008, with the race taking place at Paul Ricard, a circuit last used by Formula One in 1990. The drivers were keen for practice to begin, but unfortunately it was cut short when Marcus Ericsson hit the barrier at Turn 11. It caused a lot of damage to his Sauber, a situation not helped by the resultant fire. Mercedes were the dominant force in qualifying, Hamilton taking the 75th pole position of his career. Vettel and Verstappen were third and fourth, with their teammates Ricardo and Raikkonen in fifth and sixth. Charles Leclerc impressed in eighth, with his highest grid position of the year so far. And Haas teammates Magnussen and Grosjean made up row five. And we're getting ready for the lights to go on and the return of Grand Prix racing to its birthplace of France. The top two get away very well. Sebastian Vettel is now in hot pursuit as they head down towards turn one. And Carlos Sainz looking for a room as well. Hamilton leads, there's contact at the back. Someone's lost some debris. And Bottas is turned round. Verstappen goes on the inside run. Sebastian Vettel's lost places too. And that's her, Kevin Magnussen in the Haas, making up a few places that he's got to give back. Hamilton, Verstappen, Sainz, Ricardo, Charles Leclerc going down the inside as well. And they're all jockeying for position. Safety car has been deployed. Hamilton, Verstappen and Sainz who escaped the carnage. Unbelievable start from the Renault. Ricardo Magnussen, the Claire making places too. And that is Esteban Ocon stranded. And there is Pierre Gasly. Two Frenchmen out before the first half of the first lap has been completed. So remember, he's got the ultra soft tyres on the Ferrari and it's helping in the second phase and start. He's got a great slipstream behind Lewis Hamilton. And look, Bottas much braver on the brakes. We lock up and knock him out of the race. And that was then Gasly dropping the back end of the car and just oversteering and sliding into Ocon, who was minding his own business. Here comes Kimmy. 
Daniel Ricciardo's got to watch out here. Which way is he going to go? Round the outside to try and get third place. And Ricciardo just blocks him off for the time being. But he's getting much better traction out of the slower corners is Kimi Raikkonen. And he is gaining. He is gaining. He's going to try and go the long way round the outside at uh, turn three. And Ricciardo just chops him off once again. The Red Bull doing its best to stay in front and doing so by just a few metres. Here goes Kimi Raikkonen again. Down that Mistral straight. Wheel to wheel with Ricciardo. And he has got way more pace than Ricardo locks up into the bargain as well as Kimi cuts in front of him and he is up into the podium. Oh, and who's that? The Williams, Lance Stroll. And now there's debris on the track as well there and he's got a puncture on the front left. That's never a good sign when you see a, a tyre going like that. He started from pole, he has led every lap. Lewis Hamilton takes the chequered flag and wins the French Grand Prix here at Circuit Paul Ricard. Mercedes-Benz back to winning ways and Hamilton for the first time since Spain back on top of the podium. Max Verstappen comes home to finish in second place. Kimi Raikkonen with his 25th podium since he last won a Grand Prix will take third place and that's a new Formula One record for the the most consecutive podiums without a victory in it. Great work, guys. Great work. It's a beautiful Sunday. Happy Sunday, everyone. So Hamilton was back on top with a dominant performance to take his third win of the season. Verstappen was second and Raikkonen third. With Vettel managing only fifth, Hamilton was once again the man bossing it at the top of the table, his advantage back up to 14 points. Hülkenberg's third consecutive points finish was enough to see him get ahead of Alonso in seventh. F1 headed into the Styrian Mountains for round nine and the picturesque setting of Spielberg for the Austrian Grand Prix. Valtteri Bottas was the pace setter in qualifying. He took his first pole of the year just ahead of teammate Hamilton. It was Mercedes' third front row lockout of the year. Raikkonen was promoted to third after Vettel received a three place grid penalty. Grosjean lined up in a season's best fifth ahead of the penalised Vettel. Ricardo was seventh, with Magnussen rounding off a good qualifying for the Haas team in eighth. The Renault drivers completed the top ten, Sainz ahead of Hülkenberg. It's lights out and away we go. Very good start from Kimi Räikkönen and Bottas and Hamilton having to watch out as he steams down the middle. Bottas is going to get squeezed out here. Hamilton takes the lead ahead of Räikkönen and then Bottas. Räikkönen goes wide. Verstappen has started well. Vettel going wide and Leclerc as well. It's Hamilton, Räikkönen, Verstappen, Bottas down into fourth. He's had a dreadful start of the pole sitter. As towards turn three we go now. And Kimi Räikkönen trying to make his way around the outside and he's locked up. He's going to lose places there as Verstappen comes back on the inside. Räikkönen rejoins the track. Just ahead of the Red Bull, and there's uh, the uh, Renault of Carlos Sainz going wide as well. And at the back, there's a damage to a front wing of first, Stoffel van Dorn. And now Bottas coming around the outside and reclaiming second place. Raikkonen and went in too fast to turn three, had to go wide, managed to keep some momentum. Bottas recovering well. We saw Ocon down the grass as well, out of turn two into three. And look at this then. Kimi Raikkonen and Raikkonen. And Max Verstappen swapping places metre by metre. Verstappen has got ahead of the Kimster who hasn't picked up a place on the opening lap in 2018. He's really going for it today, locking up almost into every single corner as towards the end of the first lap we come now. I've lost the power. I've lost power. Try to stop. Yeah, it's game over. Valtteri Bottas, the pole setter, is retiring from this race. And what has happened to his car or his engine? We know what's happened to his race. Is it's it been ruined. What it is doing is causing an awful lot of action in the pit lane. Okay, obviously Hamilton did not pit and is staying out. So we are now within his pit stop window. 
Which means, Ted Kravitz, that Hamilton's got to put the foot down a little bit here and increase that gap from 13 seconds to somewhere around 20, 21 seconds. I, I, I'm sure we'll hear from Anthony in a second, but I think he's probably going to ask the same question I'm going to ask, is why Lewis Hamilton didn't, or why Mercedes didn't pit Lewis Hamilton. You need 20 seconds to make a stop. So uh, Hamilton, if he pits now, he's coming out behind Daniel Ricciardo in P4. So we did lose out on that VSC. We need to find ourselves about eight seconds of race time. We'll take advantage of another safety car or VSC. Eight seconds. Hey, firm. What the hell is that? How do we miss that? I haven't got much time left. I got no time left in size. This is James. I understand. It's still with you, mate. It's my mistake, but give us what you can. Hamilton, Hamilton comes into the pits, Ted. Yeah, so Mercedes' explanation as to why they didn't pit earlier was because it's the dilemma of them being the leader. They thought if they pitted, then the Red Bulls or the Ferraris might have stayed out and held us up by splitting their strategies over two cars. Whereas Mercedes now, of course, since Bottas retired, only had one car in play. Well, you can argue that all you like for the rest of the race, but Hamilton has now pitted and has emerged behind... Well, he's emerged Vettel. behind Verstappen and Ricciardo. And there goes Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton on the run towards turn three. Vettel's on the inside of Hamilton, and the man who's second in the championship overtakes the championship leader on the track. I don't get it, guys. Just don't. Just throwing away a win. Lewis, it's James. I have thrown away the win today, but you have the potential opportunity to get back up. Oh, dear. Daniel Ricciardo has got a mechanical problem. He is out of the Austrian Grand Prix. He pulls over and he parks up. And whilst his teammate Max Verstappen is leading, Daniel Ricciardo has a DNF. That's going slowly. That's Lewis Hamilton. And he's pulling over. Lost power. OK, stop, 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 stop. He's never, ever stood on the top step of the podium here at the Red Bull Ring. And for that matter, neither of his team. But for the team and for the man, their moment has come now. Max Verstappen wins the Austrian Grand Prix. Ferrari with Kimi Raikkonen ahead of Sebastian Vettel make up the other two podium places. Spot on, Max. Spot on, mate. Mode one. That was textbook. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this feels good. <laughs> oh, yes! Verstappen was delighted to win his first race of 2018 and Red Bull's first on home turf. Hamilton's failure to finish meant Vettel's third place was enough to swing the championship table back in his favour. Seb left Austria with a one-point cushion over Hamilton. But the day belonged to Max Verstappen. It was very hard to manage the tyres, so we really had to look after them, a lot of blistering, but uh, yeah, we managed to hang on until the end. And of course, it's amazing to win here with the Red Bull at the Red Bull Ring and also so many Dutch fans around here. It's, it's incredible. We'll try and analyse and, and figure out how we can improve moving forward. But we lost a lot of points this year just through either bad calls or um, reliability. The British Grand Prix was the third race in three weeks, an unprecedented triple header in the history of Formula One. Silverstone is one of the fastest tracks on the calendar and Brendan Hartley found out just how fast during the final practice session. He was a passenger from the moment the suspension on his Toro Rosso failed when he hit the brakes at 300 kilometers an hour. He walked away unharmed, but the same couldn't be said of his car and he was unable to take part in qualifying. The battle for pole was close, but Lewis Hamilton proved too strong for Vettel. Remarkably, this was Hamilton's sixth pole position at Silverstone. The Finns filled row two, Raikkonen ahead of Bottas, Next up were the Red Bulls of Verstappen and Ricciardo. Haas continued their impressive qualifying form to fill row four. And the French-speaking duo of Leclerc and Ocon were ninth and tenth. 
British Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go. Sebastian Vettel gets a flyer ahead of Lewis Hamilton. Valtteri Bottas on the inside as well. Bottas might have a better line through and he's beaten Lewis Hamilton into turn two. Kimi Raikkonen on the outside as they head down towards Village. Vettel from Bottas nice and touched. Hamilton. Hamilton's gone round and he's clashed and Kimi Raikkonen involved as well. That is massive disappointment for the British crowd. Verstappen ahead of Ricardo, ahead of Raikkonen and then Nico Hulkenberg and then comes the Salva of Charles Leclerc. Valtteri Bottas pursuing Sebastian Vettel. Then comes Max Verstappen, Ricardo, and then Raikkonen, Hulkenberg, Leclerc, Ocon, Magnussen, and Sainz completing the top 10 on board with Kimi Raikkonen going through Cox now. Flat out alongside the Red Bull and Raikkonen gets ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. There is guts and there is bravery. Ricardo trying to fight back, but he can't get through at Maggots. Already Sebastian Vettel is uh, be, uh, past him. Kimi Raikkonen got blocked off by Valtteri Bottas. Bottas then steams through and this is where the action really starts as Perez did get turned round by Ericsson. And here's the really bad news for Kimi Raikkonen. A 10 second penalty for causing a collision. Kimi Raikkonen crashing into Lewis Hamilton. The stewards are giving him a 10 second penalty. Marcus Ericsson has a very heavy crash That'd in the Sauber. So a safety car has been brought out. Oh! He turned in from the white line, maybe a little bit uh, of extra curve, but uh, that's what happens when you're a racing driver. You know, it's not about uh, if you crash, it's when you crash from time to time. And someone's had a big off as well at the start here, and I wonder if that's Carlos Sainz. That is Carlos Sainz that has gone off in the Renault. Turn into me, mate. Are you okay, man? Yeah, but yeah, we, we see it, we see it, man. It's not nice. Yeah. Vettel very close in turn five, as close as he's been. He'll get DRS, a little bit of movement from the back of the Mercedes above Verstappen's that. Verstappen's going well. really slowly down the main straight. I think he actually might have a bit more trouble on his hands as Sebastian Vettel goes down the inside on Valtteri Bottas. What a late move, what a late lunge, what a brilliant move by Sebastian Vettel to retake the lead of the British Grand Prix. Pulling over to the side as Hamilton now has a go at Valtteri Bottas. And Hamilton moves up into second place. And whether that was orchestrated or not, that is a very important place swap and position change for Hamilton. Bit of oversteer on the exit. And now he's a sitting duck. That's and what he should have done when uh, Vettel was coming at him. Jimmy Raikkonen up then into the podium places. Ferrari have one win in the last decade at Silverstone. It was Fernando Alonso back in 2011. Uh, the British crowd, the majority of them, were hoping for a golden day for the Silver Arrow. It might just be a red letter day instead in the destiny of the championship as Sebastian Vettel wins the British Grand Prix and leads home Lewis Hamilton in second place and Kimi Raikkonen in third. The fight for five world titles goes on. Tak, 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 yeah! Grazie ragazzi, qui a casa loro. <laughs> grazie, grazie mille. It was a second win at Silverstone for Sebastian Vettel and Ferrari's first at the track since 2011. Lewis Hamilton put in a brilliant comeback drive to second and Kimi Raikkonen was third. Vettel's fourth win of the season saw him extend his lead in the championship to eight points, while Raikkonen was creating a cushion for himself in third. Vettel was delighted with his victory as he strutted onto the podium. The safety car spiced it up, but uh, yeah, it was a nice battle with Valtteri. He was pushing like crazy. Obviously, I had the advantage on the tyres, but not so easy to find a, a way through. And then I think I surprised him. So. Uh, I wasn't sure if I'd make the corner, but I did, so it worked really well and yeah, very, very happy. After a one-year absence, the German Grand Prix was back on the calendar in 2018 at Hockenheim. There was drama aplenty in qualifying, most notably for Lewis Hamilton. While on this flying lap at the end of Q1, he ran wide over the kerbs at the exit of the first corner, causing a loss of hydraulic pressure. Loosening. Stop, 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 stop. Negative, it's, negative. It's, 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 it's trundling, it's trundling. No, stop, 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 stop. Loss of hydraulic. Stop, 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 stop.
In his desperation to continue, he tried pushing his W09 back to the pits, but to no avail, he was forced to start the race from 14th on the grid. With Hamilton out of the equation, Vettel took a comfortable pole for his home Grand Prix with Bottas alongside. Raikkonen and Verstappen shared row two. The Haas drivers were next, Magnussen ahead of Grosjean. Then came the Renaults, Hülkenberg ahead of teammate Sainz. And Leclerc in ninth was inside the top 10 for the third time in four races. 67 laps ahead of us then, it's the 2018 German Grand Prix, Vettel is on pole on the right hand side, Bottas reacted quickest, can he now catch Sebastian Vettel, great battle between the two Renaults, into turn one we go, they're all keeping it clean, Vettel ahead of Bottas, going wide there is Roman Grosjean, might lose a place as a result, down towards turn two, and it's Bottas ahead of Raikkonen, locking up his brakes there, Nico Hülkenberg on the inside, almost gave the house of Roman Grosjean a chance, now Lewis Hamilton going all the way round the outside of the Sachs curve and Hamilton might just have picked up a place. So Kimmy, this is Jock. You two are on different strategies. Your strategies are slightly different and we'd like you not to hold up, Seb. Thank you. There you are, mate. Just tell me. That is the 2018 version of Fernando is faster than you. Uh, played out on the team radio and you can see exactly uh, what the result was. Sebastian Vettel now leads the race. Wouldn't it have been easier just to say, Kimmy, can you let him pass, please? Oh, and who's that going off-roading, going very, very wide? Williams. It's Charles, uh, Charles Leclerc. It looks like a Williams. Yes, it's right. It's right. a Salva. It's Charles Leclerc having... Uh, Quite a chaotic few laps here as the race leader Sebastian Vettel now gets past him. Is this look at Bottas up the inside of Raikkonen, is he? It is Bottas on the inside of Raikkonen. At the hairpin, Raikkonen struggling more. You'd think both Finns would be adept to conditions as if it were driving on ice. The rain has arrived. So how much of this circuit is that rain going to cover? And now Kevin Magnussen under pressure as Raikkonen goes round the outside of him and Raikkonen goes on the track and there's a force in here of Sergio Perez spinning off the track as well and kicking up a whole load of dirt as he lights up his tyres in a bit to get back on the racetrack and Bottas is ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. Fires it out of the race, Sebastian Vettel. He has been leading almost from start to finish, but now he's out of this race. Sake. Sake. Sorry, guys. <sighs> Safety car deployed. It's all confusion down at the Mercedes garage. Had, they weren't ready with the ultra soft tyres. That's what they want to be putting on, Martin. Not the soft tyres that they initially thought. So gap to now three is... Can we say now? But stay, but stay up. In, 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 in. Hey, man. No, no, sorry, mate. Hey, just go, good. Lewis Hamilton leads the Grand Prix. With Kimi Raikkonen pitting, Hamilton has now taken over in the lead behind the safety car. It was a Ferrari 1-2. We're on lap 54. It's now a Mercedes 1-2. And we're racing once again. No DRS for a couple of laps, but look at the extra grip Patrick Bottas has got. Is he going to have a go? Is Hamilton, he is indeed. He's going steaming down the outside. What's Hamilton going to do about that? Defend for all his might, but Bottas switcheroo at the hairpin. Now it's wheel to wheel with Hamilton. No team orders at Mercedes. As towards the Mercedes Benz grandstand, they go. Hamilton by half a car length. Now a car and a half has the lead still. Valtteri, it's James, please hold position. I'm sorry. Copy, James. But today, in Germany, it's not going to be Sebastian Vettel's day. Lewis Hamilton regains the lead of the championship. Lewis Hamilton, from 14th on the grid, wins the German Grand Prix. And for the first time in Germany, Mercedes have a 1-2 finish to regain the lead in the Constructors' Championship. Get in there, Lewis. Miracles do happen, mate. Guys, what an amazing job by you guys. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Love conquers all.
Hamilton took his fourth victory of the season. Remarkably, it was the first win of his career from outside the top six on the grid. With Vettel failing to finish and Hamilton taking victory, the Englishman was able to turn an eight-point deficit going into this race into a 17-point advantage. Further back, Bottas made up ground on compatriot Raikkonen in their battle for third place. Conditions are perfect for business time, so, uh, you know, uh, when it rained, I knew that uh, I would have a good position, but then you never knew what was going to happen after, this, after the safety car. The other guys behind had the new, new tyres on, but I guess for those who don't know me, uh, now you do. The final race before the summer break was at the Hungaro Ring, just north of beautiful Budapest. The demanding 14-corner circuit rewarded good cars and high-quality driving. Rain fell heavily at the end of qualifying, and it was world championship leader Lewis Hamilton who negotiated the waterlogged track fastest, much to the delight of Mercedes boss Toto Wolff. It was an all-Mercedes front row, Hamilton securing his sixth pole position at the Hungaro Ring. Ferrari filled row two, Raikkonen outqualifying a teammate in Hungary for the first time since 2007. Young guns Sainz and Gasly shone in the wet conditions to fill row three, and then came Verstappen, the first Red Bull driver in seventh. Both Hasses made it into Q3 for the fifth consecutive race. So the only man in Formula One history to take six poles at six different tracks. Lewis Hamilton on pole position then. Hamilton gets away well from Valtteri Bottas. Kimi Raikkonen now slipstreaming behind Bottas, trying to attack him. Great scrap between Harley and Magnussen. Hamilton leads into turn one. Raikkonen hasn't gained that place. Bottas is second, Raikkonen, and then comes Sebastian Vettel. Max Verstappen comes after that after making up a couple of places at the start. Is Vettel going to challenge Raikkonen going round the outside in turn two? Yes, he is. He's got great momentum going round there. But Valtteri Bottas hangs on to second place. Kimi Raikkonen down to fourth. Well, what's Slow. happened to Verstappen? Mate, no power, no power. Yeah, mode one. Mate, really? Oh, not another power issue related problem for Red Bull. Yeah, can I not just go and care if this engine blows up? Mate, okay. Uh, stop the car, please, on track, Max. Stop the car, please. What choke all the time with this? Honestly. Ah. And now with DRS, he's got a chance and surely he's going to have to go for it. Bottas covers the inside, Vettel goes round the outside, now switches to try and make the move down towards turn two. And Bottas is struggling for grip and Sebastian Vettel seized his moment and the opportunity has come. Oh, they touched! He wasn't quite far enough ahead of Sir Valtteri Bottas and as he tried to close the gap, Bottas went into the back of Vettel. So Bottas got a bit of oversteer through the exit, much better traction from the Ferrari. Ferrari still on DRS down to turn two. Thinks he's got him covered and he hasn't. Bottas, front wing damage. He'll probably have a lot of understeer. Oh, and they touched! That is not how I think you had it panning out. And whilst the stewards are noting the Fettel and Bottas incident, I wonder if they're going to note that incident as well. Ricardo is not quite past him. And the Mercedes just wouldn't slow down and stop. He hasn't got enough front uh, grip, so uh, Ricardo more than left him racing room. More than. Uh, I, the first incident, I have to say, I think if anybody was at fault, it was Vettel and yeah. not, Ricard and not uh, Bottas, uh, personally. But uh, that was due to Bottas getting deep into the corner and not having enough front downforce. He has won five times in Hungary before. It's a sixth win of the Hungarian Grand Prix for Lewis Hamilton, who extends his championship lead this afternoon over Sebastian Vettel. A frustrating afternoon for him. Ferrari will have two cars on the podium in Hungary for the second year running. So Hamilton led from the front to take a record sixth win at the Hungaro Ring. Ferrari got both cars on the podium, as they did at this race last year, Vettel ahead of Raikkonen. 
As the drivers and teams headed for a well-earned break, it was Hamilton who had the biggest smile on his face, this latest victory extending his lead over Vettel to 24 points. The battle was equally intense further back, where eight points separated Hülkenberg in seventh and Alonso in ninth. How do you look back on the first part of this season when you go into the summer break and you get some time to lie on the beach on the back of these last five Grand Prix and six weekends? I'm not really the beach, like lay down on the beach kind of type. I'll be doing activities, training, getting ready for the second half, but really happy with how strong it's come the last couple of races. And, and as I said, just so grateful for all the hard work and the continued efforts from the team. So um, they all deserve the break and I hope they keep pushing. We've got to come strong in the next season, next half. Following the summer shutdown, the championship battle resumed at one of the most famous circuits in the world, Spa-Francorchamps. Off track, the paddock was absorbing news that Force India had new owners. A consortium led by Canadian businessman Lawrence Stroll, father of Williams driver Lance, had bought the team, giving them cause for optimism. Day to day, we're, we're not going to change. We're still going to stay the bunch of racers that we are. Uh, you know, the ethos and the DNA of the team won't change. I think what will change is we'll have some, uh, you know, we'll be on a better financial footing and we'll be able to do and buy some of the performance things that we've always wished for. So hopefully from that regard, it, you know, in the short term, we'll get an upgrade in Singapore and in the midterm, we'll start putting some of the uh, infrastructure in place that we need such that we can improve performance in, uh, in the midterm, which is next year. Hamilton proved his rain credentials once again to take his fifth pole at Spa, just ahead of title rival Vettel. Force India's new owners had given the team a new lease of life as Ocon started third, just ahead of Perez. Roman Grosjean and Kimi Raikkonen were next up, Grosjean making it into Q3 for the sixth consecutive race. The Red Bull drivers filled row four, and it was Magnussen and Gasly who completed the top ten. It's lights out and away we go here at Spa. Hamilton gets away well. Perez as well covering his teammate. Hamilton moves over to cover off Sebastian Vettel and there's locking up in a crash and Fernando Alonso goes over the top there of Charles Leclerc Salva. Also involved Nico Hülkenberg in the Renault. Hamilton down through Eau Rouge continues to lead though ahead of Sebastian Vettel, Esteban Ocon and Sergio Perez up to the top of the Radion and uh, Magnussen has made up places at the start but here comes Sebastian Vettel. He's there connect with Lewis Hamilton, Vettel is alongside and ahead, Ocon is also ahead, they're four abreast going until they come, Vettel ahead of Hamilton, ahead of Perez, ahead of Ocon, ahead of Verstappen, wow! Safety car is out, Kimi's got a puncture. Kimi has got a puncture, so he got caught up in that as well. I was going to say, Martin, if ever you want to ask yourself why the halo is in Formula One, now is a chance to look because Fernando Alonso very well protected from what could have been a very nasty incident. What we're about to see is Hülkenberg get too deep on the brakes, locked up and boom. Wow, just could not stop in time. And we can see now what it looked like from on board with Charles Leclerc. He wouldn't have known what was coming. He did now. So that is where Ricardo. But I think he got a shove, right didn't he? In, yeah. Did Half the pack were going in there sensibly, thinking about <laughs> lap 44, not lap one. And now, with the safety car in, He's Sebastian Vettel has gone, can get his foot down, and Hamilton is following him all the way. And look, Hamilton is going to have a look into the braking zone. He could go through there legally, but he's got in a bit deep, and that's allowed Vettel to get away slightly. That was a mistake by Hamilton to attack into the final corner because it allowed Vettel to get away. So Mercedes playing their hand first and pitting Lewis Hamilton. Verstappen will take over in second place. Hamilton will want to come out ahead of Perez, who's currently running fourth for Force India and should do that quite comfortably. 
Have a nice clear track ahead of him. And box, show eyes to box. So this could be quite close, actually. Round about two and a half seconds stationary would be very good indeed. And there is Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton in the background as, Me as uh, Sebastian Vettel makes his way at 80 kilometers an hour down the pit lane. Verstappen, who hasn't stopped yet. Hamilton, who has stopped yet. Make their way around the source. It's going to be very tight indeed, but Vettel does get out ahead of Verstappen and ahead of Hamilton. But that gap has certainly come down from that 3.2 seconds now to round about 1.8 seconds. Probably hurt Hamilton a little bit that he caught the Red Bull. But he's going to get DRS now, Martin, and he's going to get past Max Verstappen, and that's going to give Lewis Hamilton extra speed along the Kemmel Strait, and that will start to help him a little bit gain on Sebastian Vettel. Hamilton retakes that second position ahead of Verstappen. It is now game on with a very commanding performance here in Belgium this afternoon. Sebastian Vettel reduces Hamilton's lead, sees the chequered flag, and wins the Belgium Grand Prix for Ferrari. Thank you. Good efforts all weekend. Vettel took his 52nd career victory, surpassing the total of F1 legend Alain Prost. Hamilton was second and Verstappen third. Victory for Vettel tightened up the top of the table, the Ferrari star now only 17 points behind Hamilton. Verstappen's podium saw him jump ahead of teammate Daniel Ricciardo in fifth. Uh, first lap, yeah, I had a great start and then uh, I did not show sure Lewis saw me, he pushed me quite far to the left. Um, but I knew my chance would be later on, up, uh, up the hill, and I think I timed it well. Obviously last year was always ending up short, so uh, yeah, uh, seems like, uh, you know, it was better this year. Obviously we had a little bit less wing, but um, yeah, uh, timing is crucial and I managed that perfectly, I thought. Then the Force India came as well, so I was... But uh, yeah, as soon as I was ahead, I was uh, quite relieved and uh, it was a very smooth race. He, Lewis pushed very hard, especially in the first stint towards the end. He was very fast in the second stint. It could uh, turn everything down a little bit and control the pace. But uh, yeah, great weekend. Monza has hosted more world championship races than any other circuit. It staged the Italian Grand Prix every year except in 1980. It's also the fastest track in F1, where top speeds have exceeded 370 kilometers an hour on the pit straight, exactly where Marcus Ericsson suffered this terrifying accident in practice. He emerged unscathed, but his car was destroyed. To be honest, with that uh, type of incident, you know, to be able to walk away from it and, and feel fully fit to, to, to drive today, you know, it's, it's quite incredible. So it says quite a lot about F1 at the moment and the safety uh, that we have in these cars today. So, you know, it's, it's very impressive, but uh, of course, uh, I, I, feel, I feel it a bit. Despite having a sore neck, he would line up 19th on the grid on Sunday. Which one of these three is going to come out on top for the Italian Grand Prix as Bottas crosses the line? Hamilton extends his advantage. Sebastian Vettel goes on to pole position. Kimi Raikkonen beats Sebastian Vettel. It is a Ferrari front row lockout. It is their 60th front row lockout in Formula One. But it's not Sebastian who's the golden boy for the Scarlet team. It is Kimi Raikkonen and on pole in Formula One for the first time since Monaco last season. Raikkonen took his first pole at Monza since 2006 and broke the record for the fastest lap in Formula One history. It was an all Mercedes second row, Hamilton ahead of Bottas. Verstappen was the lead Red Bull driver, taking his first top six grid position at Monza. Sainz, who was celebrating his 24th birthday, was seventh. Gasly was ninth and Stroll made it into Q3 for the first time this season in 10th. Expect some late braking, expect some drama. It's the Italian Grand Prix and 20 cars then lined up on the grid. Five lights on ahead of them. 
is lights out and away we go and Kimi Raikkonen gets away well covers off Sebastian Vettel Hamilton slips dreamy behind Vettel who pulls out to the left hand side of the shot and damage from Brendan Hartley lock up there for Kimi Raikkonen but he makes the first chicane Hamilton and Vettel almost touch for Stafford's on the inside of Bottas and he's made up a place going over the grass it's Kevin Magnussen in the house it's Raikkonen from Vettel from Hamilton for Stafford going to be horrible flat spots on the front tyres of Kimi Raikkonen they're side by side, look at Hamilton alongside Vettel, oh so close he'll struggle and to get round there they touch Martin, Hamilton and Vettel has been spun round, disaster for Sebastian Vettel at the start of this race he touched with Lewis Hamilton going through the chicane Hamilton came off best Sebastian Vettel losing places he's down in 18th two into one wouldn't go, there's just not enough space through there but Hamilton hung it around the outside and somehow it's Vettel that went around and has lost some bodywork for good measure. We can see what happened to Brendan Hartley. Across comes Stoffel van Dorn, across Hartley's front wing, and now he's just a passenger, really. Yeah, I found Pit, oh, oh, Valtteri Bottas has had a go into the first chicane and he's obviously got it a bit wrong. There goes Max Verstappen and Verstappen's now got a massive advantage. Verstappen's, Verstappen's looking at his mirrors, where is he? And moves over there and touches. Okay, Max, we have been given a five-second penalty. For what? Don't worry about it. Get your head down. No, don't worry about it. It's... I gave them space. They're doing a great job in killing racing, honestly. Hamilton's closer this time around. Only half a second as they cross the line. Hamilton moves out and has to go round the outside with Kimi Raikkonen. Can he take the lead of the Italian Grand Prix? Yes, he can. Kimi Raikkonen's staunch defence of his Italian Grand Prix lead comes to an end. The championship leader has come to Monza and he is going to win once more as Hamilton takes the chequered flag and the Italian Grand Prix victory to lead 215 laps at Monza as well. Get in there, Lewis. You are the man. Thank you so much for all the hard work, guys. And for continuing to believe in me. I really appreciate it. And to my fans here as well, I really appreciate it. Thank you. So, formation all the way home, just to show our Italian colleagues. Hamilton took his sixth win of 2018. Raikkonen was second and Bottas third. With Vettel finishing only fourth, Hamilton's win extended his lead in the championship by another 13 points. And for the first time this year, the gap was more than one race victory. We've got a great crowd here always. And I, whilst the negativity is always no, never great. That's what's powered me along. So I actually accept the challenge that they send. Um, but I've got a lot of British flags out here. And today it's those guys that really inspire me and also my team that are here. So and I love being here in Italy. I love the food. Um, the track is incredible. And to win here is still such an honor in front of such a big crowd. So a big thank you to everyone. Congratulations, Lewis. Really fantastic job. The Singapore Grand Prix was Formula One's original night race when it was introduced in 2008. It's grown bigger and better every year and there have been some tremendous races. Staged in downtown Singapore, the track passes many of the city-state's most famous landmarks and with so much going on, there's plenty to keep the fans entertained. When night falls and the track lights up, the excitement really starts.
Four tenths down. Vettel on Hamilton through the middle sector. Onwards now to the final corner. Sergio Perez behind his teammate. Esteban Ocon for Force India. Hamilton crosses the line of 136-0. Wow, was that fast? Nobody could beat Lewis Hamilton's time for the 200th time in Formula One. An English driver takes pole position and Lewis Hamilton for a fourth time and a fourth record equaling time takes pole here in Singapore. I don't think there was a moment in the lap that, that was like wide or any problems. It was just perfectly to the limit. So it felt like one of the best laps I've, that I remember feeling. But um, yeah, do you guys enjoy it? It was a supreme lap by Hamilton to take pole, but Verstappen also impressed to take second in the Red Bull. Vettel was third, just ahead of Bottas. Raikkonen was fifth and Ricardo sixth, the Australian starting outside the top three in Singapore for the first time in his Red Bull career. Perez was seventh and Grosjean eighth. And Ocon completed a good qualifying for Force India in ninth, with Hülkenberg tenth. Even start from the front two. Sebastian Vettel though, challenging Max Verstappen. They get very close this time. They don't touch. Verstappen just makes first corner ahead of Sebastian Vettel. They're looking up behind as they all thread their way through the first three corners. Verstappen ahead of Sebastian Vettel into the wall. Goes Esteban Ocon. Did he make contact with his teammate Sergio Perez? They were right close together again. The two force Indians and we have another first lap accident as Vettel and Verstappen down Raffles Boulevard go wheel to wheel. Sebastian Vettel ahead of Max Verstappen and just squeezes ahead of the Dutchman into turn seven. We have a safety car now deployed. Hamilton, Vettel, Verstappen, the top three. Right, just ahead of Esteban Ocon, Sergio Perez, his teammate. You've got Grosjean on the left-hand side. Now they're going to wheel to wheel, the two four cities, and yes, they did touch. It's Baku from last year all over again, and it's Ocon who is squeezed into the wall by his teammate. Ferrari are triggering what they call the undercut here, stopping before the guy in front, getting a fresh set of tyres, going like the clappers on those fresh set of tyres, and he's put the ultra-soft tyres on, with maybe Ferrari thinking they can go to the end of the race. Verstappen does pit. Kimi Raikkonen carries on. He leads the race. Daniel Ricciardo is second. It's soft compound tyres going on to the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. Will Vettel be ahead of Verstappen? It's worked. It's worked. Surely. He's, he's such a slow pit out. What are they going to meet in the middle at turn two? And we've seen this come badly wrong in the past with Hülkenberg and Massa. This time around, the drivers avoid each other and Max Verstappen retakes a place on Sebastian Vettel. Yes! OK, focus now, focus. Sergio Perez finally finds a way past Sergei Sorokin. Way oh. past, no! They've managed to crash. Perez was moving over to the left-hand side and he's got severe damage to his force in the Hülkenberg goes past, puncture on the left rear tyre. And Perez had got past. Sorokin fought him back again. Perez jinked to the left, into the Williams, and that is his race pretty much run as well, compounding a very disappointing night indeed for the Force India team. It's going to be a fourth Singapore Grand Prix victory for Lewis Hamilton. He said that this place was hotter than hell. Well, I think his lap last night in qualifying and his 61 laps tonight have been heaven sent for Lewis Hamilton, who extends his lead in the Drivers' Championship and wins the Singapore Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton is now 40 points clear of Sebastian Vettel. Fantastic weekend all round. Really, really solid. Great job, everyone. They're going back to the factory. What a weekend. Keep pushing. It was a dominant win for Hamilton. Verstappen was second in his 75th F1 start, and Vettel took his seventh podium at the Marina Bay circuit. Victory for Hamilton extended his lead over Vettel in the championship with Bottas finishing ahead of Raikkonen, the Mercedes driver closed the gap on his compatriot to just three points. In the battle for seventh place, there were four drivers within seven points. I've had such great support here. And uh, 
we had a great start. The team have just never given up faith and belief in me and, and in Valtteri and in our ability. And uh, it was a real blessing. It was a long race. It felt like the longest race of my life. So I'm glad it's over. Max put up a good fight as well. But what a day, what a weekend. I feel super blessed. Sochi on the shores of the Black Sea welcomed Formula One for a fifth consecutive year. Going into the race, the championship battle was at a crucial point. I think our car is great. We have all the reasons to be confident. The goal this year is to be even more consistent than it was last year. Grande ragazzi, grande, grande gara. It's a great result for the team. There's a long, long way in the championship and it's not all one in one race. Mamma mia! Ma mamma mia! I wish there, there was another five laps because I would have caught them. I had a lock up. I didn't want that to happen. I can't rewind the clock. That's how it goes. Days like this don't come too often. I was waiting to wipe the smile off your face. <laughs> Get in there, Lewis. Great job, guys. This is more like it. Grazie, ragazzi. Da, 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 da. Ferrari have had a slightly better package. It whoops your backside. It goes around, comes around. Oh, I mean, I was in no man's land today. I'm only one point behind. Could have been a lot worse. <laughs> Need to keep the energy up. Sebastian Vettel now is out of this race. For <laughs> sake. My mistake. From 14th on the grid, Lewis Hamilton wins! Miracles do happen, mate. You've got to have that belief. Hamilton has 25 points in the bag. He got whipped. Here comes Sebastian Vettel! You sailed past me like I wasn't even there. I mean, jeez, they, they just blitzed us today. Vettel's been spun round! Oh, silly, where did he want to go? Get in there, Lewis! You are the man! You are the man! Lewis Hamilton is now 40 points clear! What a weekend! We got these guys, come on, we can keep doing this. Keep pushing! In qualifying, Mercedes continued where they left off in Singapore. But this time, it was Valtteri Bottas who celebrated his car's electrifying pace. Yeah, it feels good. Still, still a bit of shakes, you know, it uh, takes some concentration, but it was fun. Did it take that much to get pole position? I can see you're still shaking. The emotions are trying to get on top of Lewis, who's on supreme form at the moment, and coming up behind you to congratulate you. Yeah, you know, it's uh, maybe I don't look like, but I'm, I'm really happy for sure. Um, but you know, it's only only first step uh, in this weekend. It's a massively long run from turn uh, from from the start line to the turn one, so it's going to be important to try and keep that position. For Max Verstappen, there were celebrations of a different kind. The Dutchman celebrated his 21st birthday on race day, and it didn't pass unnoticed. There was even a cake waiting for him when he arrived at the Red Bull pit. Bottas took his second pole of the season, continuing his record of never being outqualified by a teammate at the Sochi Autodrome. The Ferraris were on row two, Vettel ahead of Raikkonen. Magnussen was fifth, the first time he'd started in the top ten at this track, and Ocon was sixth. Leclerc lined up seventh to mark his first appearance in Q3 since the summer break. Grosjean was ninth and Marcus Ericsson made it into Q3 for the first time in three years. The Red Bulls were at the back of the grid after Verstappen and Ricardo changed power unit components and the resultant grid penalties saw them line up 18th and 19th. Let's see what the Russian Grand Prix serves up this afternoon. It's lights out and away we go. Great start from Sebastian Vettel. He's already alongside Lewis Hamilton and now it's a long, long it's wheel to wheel, Hamilton and Vettel, Hamilton is now pulling away as they now break for the first time and on the inside Valtteri Bottas trying to get around the outside Lewis Hamilton, then Vettel and Raikkonen and then Magnussen as well ahead of uh, Roman Grosjean who's got a decent start, round turn three we go Bottas, Hamilton and Vettel, Kimi Raikkonen settles into fourth and down towards turn four, another breaking zone Magnussen just staying ahead of Charles Leclerc who's up there for the Sauber, great start there from Valtteri Bottas and from Hamilton and Vettel.
And on we swing over with Max Verstappen. And he's got the Renault not just in his sights, but the Renault passed as well. Verstappen's dispatched of Sainz, and he's dispatched of uh, Hulkenberg on this lap. And he's now up into 11th place. Boy, has he got the bit between his teeth today. Brendan Hartley down at turn two. And for the Toro Rossos, it's been a uh, pretty poor opening few laps. Gasly had his spin down at turn four. I saw it was both guys. OK, I thought we were watching yeah. the same one. Max Verstappen making the next move all the way up to P5 already. Charles Leclerc. Where's Charles Leclerc? He's back in sixth now. Verstappen is up into fifth place. Tell you what, if you drew Max Verstappen in the, in, in the race win sweepstake, you're suddenly moving to the edge of your sofa thinking, I've got half a chance here. Who needs 53 laps to do it when you can do it in eight? <laughs> So Sebastian Vettel needs his crew to give him the fastest possible change of tyres they could ever wish to give him. Bottas on his outlap was able to go six tenths quicker in Sector 2. So if Vettel can do that in Sector 3 and Sector 2, he takes a challenge to Mercedes who need a perfect pit stop after that 2.8 by Ferrari. So Sebastian Vettel now making his way into the final sector. I think Ferrari might just be very close to this. I'm just watching the driver tracker. Behind Kimi Raikkonen, here's he is. Sebastian Vettel, and here's They've Valtteri done it. Bottas. They've done, it. They've done it. Bottas goes past Hamilton. Sebastian Vettel, will he go past Hamilton or not? It's going to be wheel to wheel going into the second corner. He Hamilton on the inside. Sebastian Vettel around the outside. Sebastian Vettel gets past Lewis Hamilton and for once, Ferrari's race strategy works in their favour and that man however far he's travelled this afternoon it is well worth the effort because his man is now ahead of Lewis Hamilton Ferrari's strategy working Hamilton's got to get past Vettel on the track Kimi Raikkonen leads this race by the way from Max Verstappen Valtteri Bottas is in third Sebastian oh, Vettel fourth then Hamilton and Hamilton is coming back at him and he's got a great toe oh and he wanted to go down the inside but there wasn't room and at the last moment just had to back off how they didn't touch there, I don't know. But Hamilton's going for it again towards turn four. Has he got enough on the Ferrari? Under breaking the squeeze down the inside. Hamilton's done it. Lewis Hamilton gets past Sebastian Vettel for the second time of asking. That was brilliant racing. Now this, oh. this here, Hamilton having to get out of that move. Reactions like a cat who's just had 17 energy drinks, quite frankly, it was that quick. But he regained his composure to move down the inside at turn four. So you need to let Lewis by into turn 13 for this lap. Valtteri Bottas has just let Lewis Hamilton pass. This is the buffer that Mercedes need uh, to extend the advantage from Ferrari, but... Oh, it's going to go past the next lap. Valtteri, it's James. We had a risk with Lewis against Vettel. He has a small blister. I had to do this to make sure we secured this. I understand. And this is because of Max Verstappen. Verstappen being out in the lead. There's Toto Wolf pressing the button, making the decision. Clearly his call for it to happen right there and then. Because Sebastian Vettel was gaining on Lewis Hamilton. Valtteri Bottas wasn't able to get past Max Verstappen. His pace was slowing. They needed to put one car in terms of the championship pool between Hamilton and Vettel. And Bottas had to be the man. So he's now running fifth, is Max Verstappen, and he's going to chase after Kimi Raikkonen. For the third time in his Formula One career, Lewis Hamilton sees the chequered flag and wins the Russian Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel loses 10 points to his championship rival. He comes home on the podium, but is now 50 points behind in the Drivers' Championship. Valtteri, this is Toto. Uh, difficult day for you and difficult day for us. Let's discuss it afterwards when we, when we come together and we'll explain the things. Hamilton won in Russia for a third time. And with Bottas second, this was Mercedes' third 1-2 finish of the season. Hamilton now led Vettel by 50 points. That was the equivalent of two race wins with only five rounds remaining. Bottas and Raikkonen continued their intense fight over third, separated by just three points. Uh, it's actually quite a difficult day because, um, yeah, I mean, Valtteri did a fantastic job all weekend and it was a real gentleman to, to let me by. Obviously, 
he's now not fighting for the championship is where we are. And, um, you know, it's just been such a great weekend for the team. The team have done such an exceptional job to have this advantage on Ferrari and have a one-two. Usually you'll be just elated, but, um, you know, I, I, I can understand how difficult it was for Valtteri, but really he did a fantastic job today and deserved to, to, to win. But um, championship-wise, as a team, we're trying to win both championships, and um, I think today it was a real team effort. So whilst it doesn't feel spectacular, and I know he's going to do great in following races to come. The Mercedes drivers, joined by the team's technical director, James Allison, had plenty to celebrate on the podium. The next race was the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka, one of Formula One's most historic tracks. For the 30th time, we come to Suzuka. It's the Japanese Grand Prix. 155,000 fans get a view of one of the great tracks on the Formula One calendar. It's a hell of a thing. Oh, he wanted to go down the inside. Vettel has been spun round. Hamilton's clashed. P1, Sebastian. It's in there, Lewis. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> this is magnificent. Yes! There were thrills and spills aplenty in qualifying, and the first driver to fall foul of the tricky conditions was Sebastian Vettel. The Ferrari star overcooked it at the hairpin in Q1 and spun round. Worse was to follow for Marcus Ericsson. He ran wide at the top of the challenging S's section and crashed his Sauber. He emerged unscathed, but his damaged C37 needed a lot of repairs. if you saw, but basically lost the power. Okay. Ricardo failed to set a time in Q2, much to his frustration. As the big guns headed into Q3, the weather showed its hand. Drizzle started to fall, leaving the teams with a difficult call to make on tyre selection. Ferrari sent its cars out on intermediates. I think it looks too dry. While Hamilton and the rest of the field were on dry tyres, which proved the right call, and both Ferraris were immediately back in the pit lane. With conditions worsening, the first lap in Q3 was the one that counted, and Hamilton did his thing and set a stunning pole time that was three tenths faster than everybody else much to the delight of the Mercedes pit garage and team principal Toto Wolff in particular, who is impressed by their strategic calls. Master stroke. Master stroke. The, the call that we made to go out for Q3, which is probably the most difficult call, you saw all of us fumbling and kind of trying to figure out what to do. The team just were spot on with it and gave us the opportunity to, to grab this, um, this pole position. So whilst it was a bit of an anti-climax because we didn't get, get to do the last lap, it was still you know, my, it's my AT. I can't believe that I have AT and, and I couldn't have done this without the team. The pressure was on Vettel and he made another mistake, resulting in him starting eighth, his worst grid position of the season. You know, if anything, it was my mistake in uh, Spoon that, you know, took the chance to, to qualify high up with the one lap that I had. But yeah, that was it. So, Can you fight back? Not just into the, the high reaches of the points, but to the podium, maybe even to battle with the Mercedes tomorrow? Well, we see for a start they've been faster than us the whole weekend, so it's going to be difficult, but who knows what happens tomorrow. It was the 80th pole position of Hamilton's career and another front row lockout for Mercedes. Raikkonen had still never started inside the top three at Suzuka in 14 attempts. Grosjean in fifth made it into Q3 for the 10th consecutive race. With Hartley in a best ever sixth and Gasly seventh, it was a great result for the Honda-powered Toro Rosso. Perez and Leclerc completed the top ten. And 
It's lights out and away we go. Hartley gets away well for Toro Rosso. Hamilton covers off Bottas. Verstappen now slips behind Bottas. Sykes pulls out to the right hand side as they all go through turn one. And Sebastian Vettel on the inside of the Toro Rosso going wheel to wheel with Pierre Gasly. Now it's Hamilton through the S's ahead of Valtteri Bottas, Verstappen and Raikkonen. Then comes Grosjean and Sebastian Vettel who's made up places. Crucially getting past the two Toro Rossos already. It's been a brilliant start. Daniel Ricciardo already up in the 14th place into the hairpin we go, Vettel right on the rear wing of Roman Grosjean, down the inside goes Daniel Ricciardo and he's trying to make up another place this time on Kevin Magnussen through that hairpin and Sebastian Vettel now on the approach down to Spoon goes wheel to wheel with Roman Grosjean into Spoon goes Vettel and that's a super move. Raikkonen has a little look on Verstappen going into the chicane of Verstappen locks up and then goes on to the runoff area and he pushes Raikkonen wide All and right. they touched as well. He'll pick up a penalty for that. I think he just pushed him a little bit too wide. We can have another look, Paul Resta. Yeah, and you can see Verstappen just ran wide. He's locked. He's went all four wheels off the track. And when he comes back on, you can see Raikkonen there. He didn't really have place to go, actually, when you look at it from that angle. I think Max did his best, but unfortunately Raikkonen committed himself and he found himself on top of the curb. And that's where you're not going to get any traction out of there. And that is Kevin Magnussen with rear a puncture. puncture and the rear left tyre hanging on very precariously indeed. Now, what has happened to Kevin Magnussen in the opening stages here? here we're Trying to, to have a go board. here on Magnussen. Oh, oh, he's hit him. He moved too late there, Magnussen. Moved far too late. Magnussen is and will always be stupid. Uh, so you've been given a five second time penalty for leaving the track and not returning uh, safely. I tried to do the best I could. The, he, he drives around the outside. He could have easily just waited for me to come back. We get racing again. And this is where Verstappen's vulnerable. Look, Vettel knows this is where he needs to make an impact now. As through, and Spoon oh. goes Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen. And Sebastian Vettel has come off worse as the two cars make contact. It is all happening to Verstappen at the moment. He makes contact with a Ferrari and he gets a five second penalty. He makes contact with the next Ferrari and he spins Vettel around. Crofty just watching the move. Vettel was nowhere. Look how far behind he was. This is a quick corner. And you can see Verstappen leaves him the space, but he's overdone it. He's committed, hit the inside curb and round he goes. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Daniel Ricciardo, last of the late breakers. After starting 15th, Daniel Ricciardo is now up into seventh place. Roman Grosjean, this time, is the driver that he's passed into that chicane late on the brakes, and he's replicating what Verstappen did last weekend. Gasly's making the move on the sober. We talked about he needs to do it early. He's going to have the grip around the outside, and he's got it done. Well, it has to be said, that Sauber's looking a difficult car to handle. Here we go again, towards Spoon Curve. There's room on the inside. And Sebastian Vettel says, thank you, I'll take that room, and I'll move myself past. It looked like another compliance overtake, didn't it? Yeah, and it's a lonely race, isn't it, from here on in. Vettel, some 40 seconds behind his teammate. Oh, Charles Leclerc. Oh, there's uh, something broken. Something is broken. Oh. Only touch wall. Yeah, something broke. In the Bottas morning as Bottas locked up. locks up and everyone is now on the edge of their sofa because Valtteri Bottas locks up. Fernando Alonso keeps out of the way because he was being lapped and Verstappen had a little sniff there and is going to chase after Bottas once again. The engine is so rough. Unbelievable. Lewis Hamilton, who'd won three of the last four Japanese Grand Prix, has now won four of the last five Japanese Grand Prix. It is Hamilton's day in Suzuka and Mercedes, with Max Verstappen challenging hard to the line, pick up a 1-2 finish as well. Hamilton beats Bottas, beats Verstappen. It is Lewis Hamilton's day in the land of the rising sun. Woohoo! Guys, man. I love you guys. I love driving the car. I love this track. I'm so happy, man. I'm so appreciate everything you've done for me. Thank you so much, guys. Hamilton notched up his ninth victory of the season and his 50th career win for Mercedes. Bottas was second and Verstappen completed the podium. With Vettel's form fading, Hamilton's lead at the top of the table was now 67 points. No one in the history of Formula One had ever lost a championship from such a dominant position. The whole weekend's been incredibly uh, strong from the team. It's a great one too for Mercedes and a true showing of 
you know, the real strength and depth that we have as a team. And, and this track is the best track in the world, you know. They don't make tracks. I don't know why they don't make tracks like this anymore, but I was able to look after my tires the way I wanted and just manage the pace. But uh, it's really weird because, you know, I've obviously been racing a long, long time, but the happiness I have inside is, is as high as always. So it's a great feeling. Was it now too late for Sebastian Vettel? It was back to North America and the Circuit of the Americas, just a short distance from Austin, Texas. Hamilton would clinch the world title if he outscored Vettel by eight points. His cause was helped during practice by this incident involving Charles Leclerc. The session was stopped to allow marshals to clear gravel from the racing line and the stewards deemed that Vettel hadn't slowed down sufficiently while returning to the pits under red flag conditions. They gave him a three-place grid penalty. Sebastian's plight now looked even more daunting. Hamilton took his third consecutive pole in Austin, with Raikkonen leading the Ferrari charge. Bottas was third, with Ricardo fourth for Red Bull. Vettel, after that three-place penalty, lined up in fifth with Ocon sixth. Hülkenberg was seventh, and Grosjean gave Haas their first top ten start at their home Grand Prix. Leclerc and Perez completed the top ten. Verstappen is still going, I wonder if it was him initially, but uh, Ricardo, there's contact again. Ricardo got a tremendous start, had a look at the inside of Bottas. Those ultra soft tyres on the Ferrari worked perfectly. Lewis knew he could not have contact with that Ferrari. Vettel went off the track and came back on rather abruptly, but I don't think that'll be a problem. For the first time since Abu Dhabi 2016, Kimi Raikkonen makes up a place on lap one and his teammate Sebastian Vettel has made up a place on Daniel Ricciardo as well. A flying start for the two Ferraris. Oh, Vettel is now past Vettel Ricciardo. Got... Can Ricciardo fight him back? Vettel out broke himself just a little bit and it's now going to be nip and tuck as there's more contact down at turn 12 and another car spinning off oh, as Ricciardo again. into Sebastian Vettel. They've rammed each other. Sebastian Vettel Vettel, as it happened at Suzuka, has now been spun 180 degrees in the next race as well. That's the third time we've seen that Ferrari make contact with his front axle. He'd already passed a Ricardo and then got too deep into the corner and a little bit of contact across his front axle and around goes Vettel. Daniel Ricardo stopping by the side of the track. He is pulled over to the side of the track and his last US Grand Prix for Red Bull ends with a mechanical retirement on lap nine. If Raikkonen pits, there's a chance he could get out ahead of the car in fourth <laughs> place. Oh, and in. Hamilton goes in. <laughs> yes, so Hamilton to... has done the opposite to Kimi Raikkonen. <laughs> he was trying to go this way and the other, throw the bluff, throw the double bluff, and Hamilton didn't fall for that. Lewis is 3.7 behind, so don't hold him up. Raikkonen has put in the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, and that's going to change very quickly, has changed quickly. Bottas will get out of the way. They're on completely different strategies now, and Hamilton absolutely flying. Uh, full nine-tenths faster than Raikkonen. 
DRS for Lewis Hamilton. Fast pace from the Ferrari. Hamilton tries to go down the inside. He can't do it once again. Is the outside the way to go here? Not on that occasion. Once again, Hamilton gets great traction out of turn 12. Now trying to go around the outside and is really being held up by Kimi Raikkonen. It was a bold move by Hamilton. It hasn't paid off and he's lost yet more time behind that Ferrari. And this is really, really hurting his chances of winning the race today. Through turn 17 we go where Kimi Raikkonen was passed by Max Verstappen last year. He's not going to be passed by Hamilton on this occasion. So bumpy in turn 18 there. Lewis had to get out of it. And Raikkonen pits. That's played beautifully into the hands then of Mercedes. And Red Bull will be so disappointed that that's happened because Verstappen was coming at them like crazy. Just 3.8 seconds off the lead is Max Verstappen. That's really playing into his hands. There is the Mercedes pit wall. Ted, have you got a, a BDI on those guys as well? I have. I'm looking down the pit lane. It's tense, isn't it? It's because it's, 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 it's all championship. So if he does pit and then finish P3, of course, Crofty, and Vettel is P5, yeah, he is pitting. He is coming he in. He is pitting. He is coming in. If Hamilton was to finish third and so, Vettel finished P5, it carries on to Mexico. So here he goes then. Does he want to make that lunge? Does he have to make that lunge? He's a racer. He'll go for it if it's there, but it's not quite there. On this occasion, Verstappen, a few car lengths ahead, but gets a really bad exit. Coming out of turn 12, and suddenly, Lewis Hamilton is all over Max Verstappen. This could be the title right here, as Hamilton switches to the inside, and Verstappen just stays ahead, as they now go left-handed, and gets the inside line himself. But once again, Hamilton gets a better exit. Now, round 10. 17 Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen going wheel to wheel and Verstappen on the better line getting away from Hamilton as he goes wide and onto the runoff and was that the moment that the title today slipped out of Lewis's hands Kimi Raikkonen, who started on the front row, is going to see now, for the first time in 113 races, the chequered flag for him as a winner. Kimi Raikkonen wins the US Grand Prix and breaks the record for the longest gap between race wins. It is victory for Ferrari, it is victory for Kimi, and the strategy they got bang on this afternoon. Grande Kimi, grande Kimi. Well done, well done, my friend. Ah, uh, thank you. Finally, thank you, guys. Grande well Kimi, done. grande, well grande. This was Raikkonen's 21st career win and his first since Australia 2013. Verstappen was second and Hamilton third. Vettel's fourth place ensured the title battle went on to Mexico, but he was now 70 points behind, with only 75 left on the table. Raikkonen's victory saw him jump ahead of Bottas in third. It's been a great weekend. I think the car's been pretty good all the time, so uh, yeah, I got a good start and uh, yeah, I needed to push hard. I mean, it was battled a few times and in the end the tyres were not in the, say, in the best shape, but I think it was a bit similar for Max and uh, Obviously, Lewis had more, more tyres left, but we had, had enough speed and we, we kept it consistent uh, and just tried to keep the tyres alive until then. So. All Hamilton needed to clinch his fifth world title was seventh place in Mexico. But would he settle for that? You know, I want to win, so uh, I would like to just. That's only my ever my goal. Obviously, I've done a lot up until now to be to, to have the margin that I have. But uh, yeah, we're here to try and compete and do the best we can and 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 have a real race. On track, Verstappen was the dominant driver, fastest in all three practice sessions. The 21-year-old was all set to become F1's youngest ever pole sitter, but his teammate Ricardo had the final say, denying Max the accolade and taking the top spot by two hundredths of a second. Daniel was absolutely delighted. And he finished P1. Nice job, mate. Good luck. Oh! <laughs> Woo! Yes! 
<laughs> that was a very good lap. Nice, nice job. Max showed his frustration in Park Ferme, but it was a good day for Red Bull, who celebrated their first front row lockout of the season. World title protagonists Hamilton and Vettel shared row two, with Bottas and Raikkonen next up in fourth and fifth. The Renaults continued their recent return to form, Hülkenberg seventh and Sainz eighth, and it was an all-Sauber fifth row, Leclerc once again ahead of Ericsson. Hamilton can be on top of the world today, it's lights out, and away we go, and Hamilton makes an incredible start from third on the grid. He's already ahead of Daniel Ricciardo, and he's now going wheel to wheel with Max Verstappen. Uh, Sebastian Vettel alongside Ricciardo, Hülkenberg and Sainz scrapping it out. Verstappen on the inside, leads into turn one ahead of Lewis Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas alongside Daniel Ricciardo, and ahead of Sebastian Vettel. Verstappen has gone from second to lead into turn one, and there is Fernando Alonso going very wide, and contact right at the rear. So Ricardo just didn't get away, bogged down on the start line, never recovered from it. Great driving through there. They didn't trip over each other too much at all, except for back and Bottas off the road on the outside of turn five, locks his wheel to the double apex of turn six. We're on board with Lewis Hamilton. As it stands, he will be the world champion. He's down in fourth place at the moment. The car in front of him is Kimi Raikkonen. He hasn't stopped yet. The man leading the race is Sebastian Vettel. He hasn't stopped for a pit stop yet. The man in second place, Max Verstappen, has just set the fastest lap of the race after stopping for a brand new set yeah, of and, super soft tyres. And this being held up uh, for the second time in two Sundays behind Kimi Raikkonen is allowing Daniel Ricciardo to really get on the scene. And now we've just got a series, a long double, triple S-bend coming up. And there really isn't an overtaking place through here now for Lewis Hamilton until turn one at the end of the pit straight, of course, in the beginning of the next lap. Yeah, this straight just a little bit too short. And the braking zone not really long enough to mount a challenge going into the uh, stadium section down at turn 12. Ricardo might be getting a double helping here of DRS and slipstream from the Ferrari and the Mercedes. So the Mercedes, I'm imagining, should release off that final corner. Thought it'd be better than that, if I'm honest. Well, Hamilton's not really gaining much on Kimi Raikkonen, but Ricardo's really gaining on Lewis Hamilton uh, behind, and he's got DRS obviously to help him there. Hamilton might be going for it, but Kimi Raikkonen into turn one. Ooh. He is going for it, you know. That's very, very close indeed, but they managed not to come into contact, and Hamilton gets the inside line at the exit of that chicane to pass Kimi Raikkonen, who's then passed by Daniel Ricciardo as well. So Raikkonen, during the course of one corner, loses two places. Hamilton up to third, Ricciardo to fourth. So, Sebastian Vettel pits, and it's a nice pit stop as well, as Verstappen now crosses the line and retakes the lead of this race. And box, give me box. There's Verstappen, but we're looking further back here. Hamilton and Ricciardo, where's Sebastian Vettel? Has he lost time to the second and third place man by staying out a bit longer? Looks like he might have done there. Kimi's pit stop should get him out once again behind Valtteri Bottas. Sebastian Vettel is right there on the rear wing of the Red Bull once again. He pulls out, as you can see, to the right-hand side. Breaking into turn one, we go. Sebastian Vettel on the inside of Daniel Ricciardo. They come close, but they don't touch. Lewis Hamilton racing Sebastian Vettel at this moment in time. If they tangle, Hamilton needs to make sure they're both out <laughs> <laughs> in terms of the championship. Well, let's see. DRS range for Sebastian Vettel. Look how that Ferrari is gaining. He's going down the inside on Lewis Hamilton, and I don't think that was a very feisty defence from Lewis Hamilton. Their questions answered as Sebastian Vettel moves into second place in this race. Here comes Ricardo this time, he's going to go around the outside, Hamilton locks up and goes deep and off into the runoff area and over the grass at turn one. Nothing left guys, his tyres are dead. Copy Lewis, we're looking at the options. Daniel Ricardo. The man who's had more DNFs than any other driver this season. Seven of them in total. A puff of smoke there that he will not want to see. 
and seven DNFs become eight. Max Verstappen's smile will be beaming in Mexico this evening. Verstappen wins the Mexican Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton, the man from Stevenage, has done it once again as he rounds the final corner. It's high fives for Lewis Hamilton, a five-time champion of the world. Hey, Lewis, congrats, man. That's how you do it, baby. Just like I taught you. That's how, that's how you do it. Just like that. That's how you're supposed to drive. For the second consecutive year, it was a dominant victory for Verstappen. Vettel came home second with Raikkonen third. Hamilton's fourth place was more than enough to clinch his fifth world title with two races to spare. He took the spoils, but it had been a long, hard fight with Vettel. Bono said on the radio, it wasn't one here, it was one through a lot of hard work throughout a lot of races. So I'm so grateful for the hard work back home, for all our partners, for everyone that's been a part of it, and from, ultimately for Mercedes, you know, I've been with Mercedes since I was 13. To complete this, um, you know, when Fangio had done it with Mercedes, you know, it's just a, it's an incredible, an incredible feeling. And then uh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my, for my all the hard work my dad did, all my family. So, um, yeah, a very humbling experience. Hamilton celebrated as he joined Fangio and Schumacher as the only drivers to have won five world titles. Well deserved, congrats to him and his team. They did a superb job all year, so uh, yeah, I think uh, we need to stand there, accept that and say congratulations. Obviously would have uh, loved to hang in there a little bit longer, but it wasn't the case. Max Verstappen stood on the top step of the podium and he had an important job to undertake. I have one question for you, Max. Do you want to start the party officially by pressing the button? The vast urban expanses of Sao Paulo welcome the teams for the Brazilian Grand Prix, the penultimate round of the championship. Newly crowned world champion Lewis Hamilton showed no signs of letting up when he took his 10th pole of the year. Hamilton and Vettel shared the front row for only the fourth time this season after Hamilton set a new qualifying record around Interlagos. Bottas had been quickest in Q2, but couldn't repeat his pole position from last year. Verstappen was the lead Red Bull driver, ahead of Ericsson, who celebrated his best ever grid position. Leclerc was seventh and Grosjean made his 12th top 10 start in 13 races. Gasly and Magnussen were ninth and 10th. It's lights out and away we go. Hamilton and Vettel get away well. Bottas very fast ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. Vettel on the inside ahead of Valtteri Bottas. But for the time being, Bottas skips around the outside. Got a better line into turn two and Valtteri Bottas. Ahead then of Sebastian Vettel. Verstappen is ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. Both Ferraris struggling to get away on those harder tyres. It's hurt them a little bit, but already Raikkonen on the offensive. Marcus Ericsson's going back with Charles Leclerc under pressure as well as into the Decino de Lago. We go and Kevin Magnussen going wide in the Haas. It's Lewis Hamilton that leads from Bottas and fed right over his rear wing. Then Raikkonen of Verstappen. Down the uh, outside goes Max Verstappen on Kimi Raikkonen into turn one. He's got another Ferrari ahead of him. It's Sebastian Vettel. Speeds of over 200 miles an hour and he's getting a decent slipstream behind Fedel who's got DRS as well. He's going down the inside. It's Max Verstappen almost off the track and manages to squeeze past Sebastian Fedel and he's up in the third place. This is hugely significant for this Grand Prix. That car has got good race pace. The Ferraris have swapped places. Kimi Raikkonen getting past Sebastian Vettel on the run down the Retta Aposta into the Skid of the Lago. It was a lock-up from Vettel that cost him pace and Kimi said, no, I'm not going to wait for you all day, I'm coming past. 
Bottas locked up in the midfield. That's allowed Verstappen to get closer. Which way is he going to go? Left or right? Left or right? Down the left he goes. Bottas gives him room. Max Verstappen says thank you very much indeed. Second place is mine. He likes it. The rest of the grandstand like it. And I quite liked it as well. Max Verstappen stops. It's the soft tyre. There was a little hesitation on the, uh, the front left. It's a three-second stop, though. That's yep. four-tenths slower than Lewis Hamilton. Is that Hamilton going through the first corner? Yes, it is. And Verstappen will come out, not only behind Lewis Hamilton here, but behind Stoffel van Dorn as well. Key is, can he get ahead of Fernando Alonso so he doesn't have to lap that back marker? He can. Verstappen's almost pushing that Mercedes up the hill here. Such is his pace uh, difference and such is the speed and the exits uh, the speed that he got from Jun Sao. Moves over to the right-hand side of Lewis Hamilton. Max Verstappen looks in his mirrors. Don't know why he was doing that because Hamilton was alongside and then was passed. And they do rather like that one. And there is Bottas and Raikkonen. So this time, Kimi looks a little bit closer to me, Martin. It looks like Kimi Raikkonen might have the opportunity down the straight, kicking up a bit of dust as they go off the racing line. And that is Max Verstappen, the race leader. And he has spun, coming down the hill. Did they make contact? Not really sure what the Force India was trying to do at that point in a back marker. That was Esteban Ocon uh, down there. Here's the onboard with Max Verstappen. Down the inside he goes. And Esteban Ocon has been given a 10-second stop-go penalty for causing a collision. Lewis Hamilton is going to cross the line and win the Brazilian Grand Prix. His 50th win in 99 races in the Turbo Hybrid era. It's a fantastic achievement. Max Verstappen comes home to take second place. The victory could have been his. And I'm sure we'll hear about that contact with Esteban Ocon quite a lot. Yes. That's it, Lewis. That's the double mate. Mercedes AMG Patronus, world champs. Lewis Hamilton, world champ. Mate, I don't know what to say, mate. I do not know what to say about that. Yeah, no, I know what to say. I hope he. I can't find him now in the paddock because then he has. But this is what it means to the team: a fifth successive constructors' championship. It's phenomenal. Through rules and regulation changes as well, they've come out on top. Hamilton won his 10th race of 2018, ahead of Verstappen in second and Raikkonen third. Hamilton was already champion, but things were tightening up behind him. Bottas was now under serious pressure from Verstappen in their battle for fourth place. Mercedes clinched the world title for the fifth consecutive year. They've now completed the driver's constructors double every year since the turbo hybrid era was introduced in 2014. Elsewhere in the pit lane, things got a bit heated when Max Verstappen bumped into Esteban Ocon at the post-race weigh-in. Some choice words were exchanged and the physicality of the discussion earned Max two days community service with the FIA. For the fifth consecutive year, Abu Dhabi hosted the season finale at the Yas Marina circuit. On the eve of the race, Robert Kubica was announced as a 2019 Williams driver. His is a great comeback story following his terrifying rally crash in 2011. It's, uh, it's a great feeling, of course, uh, a lot of emotions and, uh, are behind it, uh, a lot of work. So, yeah, delighted to be part of, uh, again, part of uh, top 20 drivers in Formula 1 and delighted to be able to put my car on the grid next year in Australia. So, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity to Claire, to Williams, uh, to Frank, and uh, looking forward, definitely. Meanwhile, double world champion Fernando Alonso was limbering up for his final race in Formula One. So far, I think it's... it's uh, 
a normal weekend. Uh, I think on, on Sunday it's going to be different when um, it gets a little bit more emotional. But uh, yeah, it feels it feels okay right now. And uh, as I said, it's going to be special, emotional, and uh, hopefully a, a good one. Hollywood superstar Will Smith waved the cars away at the start of the formation lap, during which, once again, many people's thoughts were with Alonso. All right, champ, here we go. Millions and millions of people watching. Got everyone here at McLaren cheering for you. Let's go out with a great race. Yeah, let's do these guys. We will give it all. As always, very proud of you. Hamilton took pole number 11, and with Bottas joining him on the front row, it was Mercedes' fifth consecutive front row lockout in Abu Dhabi. With Vettel and Raikkonen third and fourth, Ferrari have still never qualified on the front row at Yas Marina. Ricardo maintained his record of never being outqualified by a teammate at this race. Grosjean was seventh, and Leclerc was inside the top 10 for the fourth consecutive race. Esteban Ocon was hoping to finish his Force India career on a high, from ninth on the grid. Green light then waves at the back of the grid one more time in 2018. It's lights out and away we go. And it's a good start from Hamilton and from Bottas and Sebastian Vettel trying to catch the Mercedes. Behind them comes the Rebel and for Danny Ricciardo just behind Kimi Raikkonen and Max Verstappen. I don't think it's the best start out there going wide is Roman Grosjean through turn one. He's lost places uh, to the Force India of Ocon and Nico Hülkenberg. And there's Max Verstappen right behind the Force India. There is Charles Leclerc going wheel to wheel with Danny Ricciardo into the chicane. Ricciardo breaks latest and makes the corner. But Leclerc really fancies with some top oh. speed down there, a move, and that is the Renault of Hulkenberg going over and over and over and out of this race. And that is Nico Hulkenberg against the barrier, taking a tumble and being punted off the track. And that is a worrying accident to see at the start of this race. Are you okay, Nico? I'm hanging here like a cow. Yeah. Get me out of this fire. Yeah. It's fire. It's alright, they come in. They come in. Well, Hulkenberg is okay. The fire has been put out. And there's the view of Hulkenberg uh, getting upside down. Is he okay? He's, he's, he's okay, he's talking, he's okay. okay. Yeah. okay. okay. Good. on ahead of Verstappen, 8th and ninth at the moment. Is Verstappen going to go down the inside again? You know what he is, and it had to be, didn't it? Max Verstappen getting past Esteban Ocon, but was there contact there? Ocon certainly getting out of the way before there was too much contact for the Force Indian and the Red Bull to take, but he's fighting back again because they've got the top speed down the straight. Ocon is back ahead of Verstappen, pulls across him. Verstappen's going to have to go the long way around the outside, and Ocon has him covered off for now. I think that uh, repass there might have saved Max from a uh, little word from the stewards. Now he's the one who'll get DRS and a great run down into turn 11. But the but inside line goes to Esteban Ocon who cuts back in front of Verstappen again. Now Verstappen's got the inside line into the chicane he goes and that eighth place once again belongs to the Dutchman and the Frenchman is following him and will have to try again to get past. And that is the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen okay. pulling over and parking and his final race for Ferrari ends on the pit straight. And here comes Sebastian Vettel on Valtteri Bottas. Bottas will be slow out of that chicane, it'll be Vettel who gets DRS, Bottas has to stay on the inside, there's nothing he can do about it. Bye bye, second place. He's now got Max Verstappen right behind him. And this is going to get punchy, isn't it? Bottas has got to stay completely left, make sure there's no space down there. That's what he's done, but once again, he's miles out of line now. Oh, that's clever by Verstappen. He went very wide to the right-hand side, switched back, and he's put Valtteri Bottas off the track as well in squeezing his way past. They love that down at Rebel. Oil may be on the tyres, we may be oil, take care, take care, we could have oil. And if you're spilling oil, you're duty bound to take off the racetrack. I lost all power. 
car number 44 has really been the number one once again. He comes home to win the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and to crown a championship winning season with victory in the final race. Sebastian Vettel follows his home as runner-up here and runner-up in the championship as well. Max Verstappen finishes on the podium. Alonso in his final race only just missed out on points. Champ, what a career. Thank you, thank you. You're a champ, let's go win the Triple Crown. Hamilton took win number 11 of the season and his eighth in the last 11 races. This being the final race of the season, the drivers didn't need to worry about conserving engines. So Hamilton, Vettel and Alonso wowed the crowd with a spectacular show on the start-finish straight. Lewis Hamilton became the first driver in history to score more than 400 points in a season. Kimi Raikkonen retained third place and Daniel Ricciardo's final offering for Red Bull was sixth. Fernando Alonso signed off in 11th with Charles Leclerc coming home 13th in his debut season. The highest place Williams driver was Lance Stroll in 18th. Mercedes finished the year 84 points clear of Ferrari. Red Bull were third and Renault best of the rest. Force India finished 7th despite being taken over mid-season and losing their points from the opening 12 races. Fernando, we wish you well in your retirement. You'll be coming back to visit Formula One though. Yeah, as long as I'm not uh, commentating uh, <laughs> you know, like some of the ex-Formula One drivers, it's going to be okay. But yeah, it has been a, a pleasure racing with, uh, with these champions and uh, you know, I feel very privileged uh, with you too this year. And uh, yeah, thanks for everything. Thanks Formula One. I will, I will be always a fan of, uh, of this show. After 21 races on five continents, it was Mercedes and Hamilton who ruled the F1 world. But they didn't have it all their own way. Vettel and Ferrari pushed them to new limits. To quote Mercedes boss Toto Wolff, this was their hardest fought season yet.